Okay, so we've been doing an awful lot with addition and subtraction, and it's probably time to move on to multiplication and division. So the first thing we want to do is to learn some vocabulary. Factor is a number. that is being multiplied. Remember, learning vocabulary is really important. It's going to be hard to answer a question about factors if we don't know what factors are. The product is the answer. to a multiplication problem. Here in this table, we have two different multiplication problems, and it's your job to determine the factors and the product. So pause the recording for a couple of minutes, give it a try, and then come back when you are ready. Let's see what you've got. In the first problem, we have 3 times 12 equals 36. The 3 and the 12 are being multiplied, so 3 and 12 are both factors. The product, the result, is 36. In the second problem, 52 is equal to 4 times 13. It's the 4 and the 13 that are being multiplied, so we have two factors, 4 and 13. The product, the answer, is 52. There are a lot of different ways to represent multiplication. One way that we've seen up above is with this little uh, cross sort of time symbol. So you could say 5 times 7. We don't use this times very much, especially once we get started with a little algebra, because it's easily confused. I bet you can tell. with the variable x. x is probably one of our more favorite choices for a variable when we're working with an unknown quantity. And the last thing we want to do is get it confused with the multiplication symbol. So the multiplication symbol that looks like an x pretty much goes out the window once we get a little farther along in mathematics. Another thing that we could do is to use the multiplication dot. We have 5 multiplication symbol with a dot right here, times 7. Uh, we want to make sure that we raise this up about halfway through the line. We don't want it to look like a decimal. A lot of people like to use the multiplication dot because, of course, it's fast and easy to make. You just plop your pencil down in one spot on the paper. But a lot of times if you are writing um, sloppily, it can look like a decimal. Or if you're not pressing hard, it can be invisible. And then you read the number, of course, as 57 or as 5.7 if it looks like a decimal and everything gets a little confused there. But the uh, multiplication dot is really rather common, so you should know how that works. My favorite way is here, option C. There, make my star. And that's to use parentheses. So whenever you have parentheses next to each other, that indicates multiplication. You could also just use one set of parentheses. You could say 5 next to a 7, or you could also say uh, the 5 in parentheses and the 7 not. Either way works. Parentheses are very clear. Nobody can mistake them for other things, and they definitely indicate multiplication. When we start working with variables, we have a fourth option. If two variables are being multiplied, oftentimes the multiplication is invisible and we just write the variables next to each other.
So if you happen to see y z, then this means that y is being multiplied. So y times z, y and z are then multiplied. All right, let's move on to the different parts of a division problem. So in a division problem, we have three parts. We have the divisor, the dividend, and the quotient. The divisor is the number doing the dividing. The dividend is the amount being divided. And the quotient is the answer. All right, so test your knowledge here. You can feel free to leave the vocabulary here for reference, but your job is to look at the two division problems in the table below and identify the divisor, the dividend, and the quotient. Pause the recording, give it a try, and then come back. Let's see what you have. So the divisor is the number doing the dividing. So here we have 72 divided by 24. And the 24, right, whatever is going into something, that's the divisor. The amount being divided is the dividend. So in this case, it is the 72. 72 is being divided up into chunks of 24. The quotient, that would be here, the answer, 3. How many chunks of 24 do we have? We would end up with 3 of them. The other problem, 60 is equal to 180 divided by 3. Again, the divisor is the number doing the dividing. It comes after the divided by symbol. That's the 3. The amount being divided is the 180. And the quotient is the answer, should be the 60. There are a couple of different ways to represent a division problem also. We can certainly use the divided by a symbol. And we could write 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3. Just like the multiplication symbol that looks like an x, this divided by symbol tends to go uh, off to the wayside as we move on in mathematics. We don't use this very often. Uh, we also don't use this one, but you've probably seen it before, maybe back when you were in grade school, um, saying, all right, I want to have 6 go into 18, and of course the answer is 3. We still use this format for long division or any time, of course, you're dividing by hand, but um, you won't see it in writing very often. The way that we prefer to see it is with a fraction. The fraction bar indicates division. So we have 18 being divided by 6, and of course the answer, the quotient, is 3. All right, let's flip over and check out the next page. We've already studied a commutative property of addition, and you'll remember that commutative has this uh, root word here, commute, talking about things moving. With the commutative property of addition, we said that we could add numbers in any order. It didn't matter which order you added. The commutative property of multiplication is exactly the same, just with multiplication. The order in which you multiply the Do you remember what word we used to talk about things that were being multiplied together? There we go, factors. The order in which you multiply the factors does not matter.
you already know that 5 times 3 gives you 15 and 3 times 5 gives you 15. So we can reverse the order of the factors. If we were to write this in symbols, we would say that a, b, remember we said if we had two variables right next to each other, there was a multiplication implied right there between them. So that a, b is equal to b times a. a times b is exactly the same as b times a. The order in which you multiply doesn't matter. How about the commutative property of division? If you had 5 divided by 15, would that be the same as 15 divided by 5? And of course, that's not true at all. Um, just like there is no commutative property of subtraction, there is also no commutative property of division. This does not exist. And that's, of course, because the order in which you divide does matter. So let's see, let's give ourselves an example here. 15 divided by 5 is not the same. As 5 divided by 15. All right, the first one gives us an answer of 3, and the second one would give us a fractional answer. All right, so now it is your job to use the commutative property of multiplication and apply it to those equations. Remember, the commutative property of multiplication says the order in which you multiply the factors doesn't matter. So it's your job to rewrite these equations with the factors in a different order. Pause the recording and give it a shot. Let's see what we have. So here, 3 times 6 is equal to 18. We want to reorder the factors. That's the 3 and the 6. So all we're going to do is put the factors in a different order. The 18 isn't going to move anywhere. Um, the equation 8 times w equals 32. The 8 and the w are the factors. It looks a little strange to write w times 8 equals 32 but it's not wrong. Normally we like the uh, coefficients, the numbers, written before the letters, but it's not a problem if the coefficient comes afterwards. We can write the factors in any order that we choose. Let's slide up a little bit here. Okay, so division and multiplication are related, just like addition and subtraction are related. We can use one to check the other. If you were talking about 100 divided by 5, and you thought to yourself, I think that that answer is 20, you could come down and check that answer by multiplying. Right, 20 times 5 should give us 100. So we have 20 times 5, make sure it gives us 100, and then we know that we've done the division properly. Right, 56 divided by 8. Yes, that's right, it equals 7. And if we wanted to check that, we could and say that 7 times 8 gives us 56. All right, what about 0 divided by 6? What is that? Well, your first instinct probably says that the answer is 0. And let's go ahead and check that. Because, right, we're going to take this one multiply it by the 6 and end up with that one. So we should, probably shouldn't call these this one and that one. I'm going to take the quotient, multiply it by the divisor, and end up with the dividend. So 0 multiplied by 6 gives us 0. And your gut instinct of 0 for this question was correct. What would happen if you had 8 divided by 0? What do you think that is? Do you think it's zero? Well, let's give it a check. Does this work? Take the quotient, multiply by the divisor, and end up with the 
dividend. Oh my, what is that? That's garbage, that doesn't work at all. So this answer here of zero isn't correct. We better erase that. I'm going to erase it with my eraser, you erase it with your eraser. Yes, this is terrible, this is wrong. Erase, erase, erase. Okay, so what do we suppose the answer is? Um, yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe the answer is five. Okay, I know the answer is not five, and you know the answer is not five. Well, let's just look at this for a second. If we wanted to check this, we would take the quotient, which is five, we would multiply it by the divisor, which is zero, and hopefully get the dividend, which is eight. And well, of course, five doesn't work. The big deal here is that whatever gets put in this spot where the five is, is never going to work because whatever is put here, when you multiply it by zero, you are never going to get eight. So let me erase this here for a second. We'll put in something a little more useful. Erase, 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 erase. Does this even have an answer? Let's suppose it does, and we'll just call the answer n. So when we go to check this, we would say that n times 0 equals 8. And here's where we see that, um, yeah, this is not going to work. Let's just even cross this out here. No value for n. works. And because no value for n works, we say that division by zero is undefined. So add that to your vocabulary list to learn as well. If you tried 8 divided by 0 on your calculator, it will give you some sort of error message. Some calculators just say error, some calculators say error divide by 0, um, but that's pretty much what they're warning you about is that division by 0 is not allowed in mathematics. It just doesn't work. It doesn't check. All right, let's come down and talk about the multiplication property of equality. We had an addition property of equality before. It said you could add the same amount to both equations, uh, both sides of an equation, and the sides would remain equal. We had a subtraction property of equality. It said pretty much the same thing, except that you could subtract an amount from both sides of an equation, and the sides would stay equal. The same thing is true for multiplication and division as well. Um, essentially, whatever you do to one side of an equation, as long as you do it to the other side of the equation, the result changes, but the results are equal. So let's write that down. If you multiply both sides of an equation, by the same amount, you maintain equality. If you were looking this up in a textbook, it would give you some symbols. Um, you might possibly see something like this. We'll change colors here. That if you start off with two things being equal and you wanted to multiply both sides of this equation by the same amount, let's say I wanted to multiply both sides by an amount called c, then a times c is equal to b times c. Right? You get a different amount, but both amounts are still equal. Uh, we have exactly the same thing happening with the division property of equality. So I'm going to slide the uh, page up here a little bit. And we'll, whoops, hold on. That's better. All right, back to the division property of equality. Same idea that we had before. If you divide both sides of an equation,
by the same amount. Now let's pause here for just a second because we just learned that you're not allowed to divide by, yeah, you're not allowed to divide by zero. So let's make ourselves a note, not zero. Then you maintain equality. So if you were seeing this in a textbook, again, we would start off with two sides being exactly the same. And we'd like to divide both sides by the same amount. So we take A, divide it by an amount called C, and find out that that value was exactly the same as B divided by C. But there would be a little note here off to the side that C is not allowed to be zero because we know that division by zero causes all sorts of problems and is not allowed. Just like we did before with the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality, we can multiply and divide both sides of an equation by any amount that we want. The choice of the amount, whatever we choose to divide by or whatever we choose to multiply by, um, is only important for how quickly we find the answer. So here in this equation here, we have 6 times the sum number x gives us 30. Our brain already knows that the value for x is 5. But if we wanted to multiply both sides of the equation by 3, we could do that. So we'd have 3 times 6x equals 30, and multiply that side by 3 also. 3 times 6 gives us 18. The x just comes along for the ride. And 30 times 3 is equal to 900. And if you had a quick check with a calculator, you would see that 18 times 5 is 900. The value for x stays unchanged. The value for both sides is different now, but still equal. We could multiply both sides of the equation by 10. If you wanted to take 10 multiplied by 6x, you could do it. But what you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So 10 times 6 is 60. And now we have 60x's. And 30 times 10, of course, is 300. And of course, you can still check that 60 times 5 gives us 300, and everything stays equal. It just looks different. Same thing is true for division. We can divide both sides of the equation by 2. It's really handy to use the uh, fraction bar version for division. So if we divide both sides by 2, it would look something like this. And of course, you already know that 6 divided by 2 is worth 3. So we just simplify that. 6 divided by 2 is worth 3. The x stays and is unaffected because we were attacking or dealing with the number portion. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Okay. Remember, x was 5. 3 times 5, yep, exactly the same value as 15. So we maintain equality. So all of these work. We can multiply and divide both sides of an equation by any amount that we want, as long as we're not dividing by 0, and still get a nice equation but none of those has helped us find what x is worth. So what we want to do is choose the amount that we multiply or divide by wisely. Here we have 6 being multiplied by x. If we chose to undo this multiplication by dividing both sides by 6, right, we already know that 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1, and that leaves us with 1x is equal to, and 30 divided by 6 is 5. We normally don't see 1x written this way. We usually just write it as x, and the 1 is pretty well understood. But that's 1x is worth 5. x is worth 5. So a wise choice helps us solve the equation. All right, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. So our job is to choose what we're going to multiply or divide by wisely. 10 is being multiplied by x, so we undo the multiplication and divide by 10. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. We know that 10 divided by 10 is equal to 1, and I'm just going to make a real big deal about this being a 1. And so our result is an x 
80 divided by 10 is just 8. And like we did before, we should probably check this. Is it true that 10 times 8 is equal to 80? Why, yes it is. And so our answer is correct. All right, your job is to come down and do problems 7 and 8 on your own. Pause the recording and then come back when you are ready. Let's see what you've got. For problem number 7, we have 56 times y gives us 3,976. We want to undo the multiplication, so we will divide by 56. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. 56 divided by 56 is a great big 1. So we are left with 1y, plain old ordinary y, and 3,976 divided by 56. Um, well, I came up with 71. Hopefully you did too. We should probably double check 56 times 71 and make sure that this answer is 3,976. But here we go. There's our answer. Y is worth 71. There's our check. In problem number 8, the variables on the right hand side, but this really doesn't change anything for us. 250 is being multiplied by P, so we'll undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by 250. 250 divided by 250 is 1, and we are left with P on the right hand side. 675 divided by 250 is 2.7, right, 2 and 7 tenths. Quick double check, does 675 equal 250 multiplied by 2.7? And it does. So there's our answer right here in the box. Let's come on down to the next page. This time we're looking at a division. B is being divided by 6 and the result is 5. So what we want to do is undo the division. B divided by 6 is equal to 5. To undo dividing by 6, we will multiply by 6. If we multiply one side by 6, we multiply the other side by 6. And of course, the nice thing about this is that we have a 6 here and divided by 6 both happening right next to each other. So 6 divided by 6 gives us 1, and now that b is all by itself. 5 times 6 gives us 30. Divisions look a little strange, so it's really worth our while to come back and check and make sure that 30 divided by 6 really gives us 5 and confirm our answer. Okay, you probably knew that one, but maybe you don't know this one or the one after that. Um, number 11 is a little strange, so I'm going to ask you to hold off on that one. But pause the recording here for number 10 and give it a try on your own. All right, let's see what we have. Our job here is going to be to undo the division. Right now we are dividing by 7. So let's multiply on both sides by 7. So we'll multiply r divided by 7 by a 7, and we'll multiply on the right-hand side by a 7 as well. Of course, 7 divided by 7 is just 1, leaves our r all alone. 85.61 multiplied by 7. Now I needed a calculator for that one. I didn't do it by hand. I probably could. You probably could, but I used a calculator. And I came up with 599 and 27 hundredths. Just to double check, let's put that value back into the original equation. 599 and 27 hundredths divided by 7. Make sure that the result is 85 and 61 hundredths. And it is. Confirm our answer. All right, number 11 takes a little bit extra. What we want to do is undo some division, but in particular, we want to undo what is being divided by. And in the last problem, we were dividing by 7, so we undid that by multiplying by 7. Here, we have 663 
is divided by, and I'm really going to write this down and emphasize it so we can see what's happening. Right? It's being divided by C. So our goal here is to undo the, the division. Remember, there is no commutative property of division. It matters which way you're dividing. So we are undoing the dividing by C. So our job is to multiply both sides by C. This may feel a little strange, but let's just see how it all shakes out. So we have 663 divided by C is equal to 13. Multiply on the left-hand side by C. Multiply on the right-hand side by C. And of course, C divided by C is equal to 1. So the left-hand side is just 663. The right-hand side is 13 times C. And we don't know what that is. We just leave it alone. And at first, it looks like we haven't made any progress at all. Um, but now it looks like one of the problems that we did a little bit earlier. We know that the 13 and the C are being multiplied. And we can undo multiplication with division. We want to get the C by itself. So we'll divide this side by 13, and we'll divide this side by 13. On the right-hand side, 13 divided by 13 is 1, so we're left with C all alone. On the left-hand side, 663 divided by 13 gives us 51. All right, this is something we definitely should check, and when you check, put your answer back into the original equation. We don't want to take a chance on putting the answer back into a line that has a mistake in it. So we're going to say 663 divided by, not by C this time, but by the 51 that we think is what C is worth and see if that comes out to be 13. And it does, so we have confirmed our answer. Okay, that's the end. Good luck as you work your homework. Don't forget that there is, of course, um, some reading material on the same topic here, and hopefully between the video and the written material, you will have good luck with your homework. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.